hey guys welcome again to the channel so based on the request i got on ig i will be showing you guys how to recreate this dress it's a high low dress with uh pleated or flared details on the side i've seen quite a few variations of this dress but the most important details is the side ruching the dipped hemline and the asymmetric neckline so for the original design they did use an already pleated fabric so i don't have this exact type of fabric and in place of that i'll be using a lightweight silk material now let's get right into it because of the asymmetric neckline detail i'm going to start with my bodice block already traced on fold as well as the back of the block now i also went ahead to turn it into a dress block by connecting from the hip line to the hem line now at this point i've already marked out my desired length so for the length i use i use 50 inches as the dipped hem line which is the longest part of the length now I use this because I was going for more like a midi length look but if you're going for a full length definitely do more than 50 inches. So a quick side note you can also use a dartless bodice for this design. So here this block I'm using does have darts so I'm going to start by measuring the waist dart and taking it out by the side. After moving the dots to the side, I'm just going to go ahead and redraw the new side seams. So here I am just labeling out my new side seam. Moving on to the back of the block, I'm basically just going to repeat the same process. On the back of the block, I'm going to mark the side where I want my strap to be, which is the one shoulder. Next, I'm going to measure my shoulder length, which was 12 cm, also the same as 4 and 3 quarter inch. Now, the little excess on the shoulder is usually the dart allowance. In this case, I don't need it, so I am taking it out on the sides. Next, I'm going to bring both armhole down with about 1 cm or half an inch, and draw the new armhole by just reconnecting those points. Before drawing the neckline on the back, I'm going to move the shoulder in with one inch, just because I wanted the strap to sit in the middle of my shoulder. Now from that point, I'm going to measure the width of my strap, which here I use three inches. Next, I'm going to connect from this point back to the armhole. To complete the neckline, I'm going to draw from this point to the side of the seam by using my French curve. Now here I'm just marking at the points where I'll be adding my seam allowance. So back to the front of the block, I'm just going to repeat the same process. Side note, the part that I'm marking on is the part I'm going to cut facing up, which is going to be the right side of the fabric. So to make sure the patterns will be on the same sides, I'm going to place them side by side and then mark. Again, I'll be moving the shoulder one inch in and then draw the new armhole. If 
before I draw the neckline for the front, I'll need to close both shoulder dots. So to do that, I'm just going to cut my pattern pieces out through the new points that I've marked. Again, to make sure both shoulders are in the same place when you cut your fabric out, you're going to place them side by side and also just note that point. Next, I'm going to switch my pattern to the other side of the seams that doesn't have the shoulder. Now, this is also the side that's going to have the ruching detail. Using both waistline as the guide, I'm going to mark the width of the opening where the drawstring is going to be on. So here I decided to use three inches. Now, what I did is from the side on the waist point, I'm marking three inches all around in a circular form. I'm going to repeat this to the other side of the pattern to have like a full circle. Now this part I'm shading is going to be cut out but before then I want to finalize the length of the dress. And here I'm just indicating the points where I'll be adding my seam allowance. Now for the high low hemline or the dipped hemline we're going to slant one side. The higher length of the hemline is going to be on the side that has the strap and then the dipped hemline is going to be on the side of the ruching. Now, based on how slanted you want, you can just use whatever measurements to achieve that. So again, the length of my dress was 50 inches and I slanted it by measuring 6 inches from the hemline higher up and then slanted back to the lower point of the hemline. Next, I'm going to repeat the same to the back part of the pattern. And make sure you mirror the pattern before you mark so that one slant does not face the other side and vice versa. Next, I'm just going to cut along the new slanted hemline. To add the fullness for the ruching detail, I'm going to mark from the semicircle all the way to the other side of the pattern. Now, you want to make sure your slashes are going to the direction where you want the ruching to appear. So here I had more slash lines along the waistline on the opposite side seam and lesser slash lines towards the other side. Now, this is where I will be adding the fullness for the flare detail. So here I'm just indicating with an arrow where I'll be cutting from and then on this other side I'm going to cut from both the top and the bottom because on the top of the waist it's going to be ruched and then towards the bottom is going to be flat. In a nutshell the parts with one arrow up and one arrow down just means I'm going to cut through entirely. So here I just decided to add one more slash line just for extra fullness. And next I'm going to cut out the back neckline. Side note, please ignore this line I'm cancelling out. So I initially wanted to move the shoulder darts to the underarm darts but realized it was all ruching and no darts. So hence me cancelling it. So please ignore. Now I'm going to be moving the shoulder darts to the side which is going to have the ruching. So basically I'm just going to draw a line from the end of the shoulder dart all the way to the other side of the pattern where the ruching or the fullness for the gather detail will be added. Then I'm going to basically just draw my slash lines as I did at the back.
to transfer the shoulder dart to the side of the machine i'm going to cut through this line close the shoulder dart and basically that's it and also the same process to move the second dart Usually when I'm marking on my necklines, I like to tighten around the neck to avoid gaping. So to do this, I mark a line from mid neck down to the end of the shoulder dart, also on the other side. Now from there, I'm going to mark either 1 cm or half an inch. But here, I think I use 1.5 cm. Next, I'm going to cut through that point to the end of the shoulder dart and then basically just overlap with the points that I marked and just tape in place. After tightening the neckline, I'm going to measure the shoulder width. Here I use 3 inches, which is the same as the back. Next, I'm going to connect with my French curve from the side up onto that point. And then basically just cut out. So if you've made it to this point, thank you for sticking around. If you do enjoy contents like this or you find any of this tutorial helpful, please give this video a thumbs up and it will also mean a lot to this channel if you can subscribe as well. So here I decided to add one more slash line just for extra fullness around the bust area. So before I open up the slash lines, I place the patterns on my fabric first just to see if it was going to be enough and to see how I'm able to lay it and spread. So I used three yards of fabric for this and also I placed it on a bias grain. And that's because this was just my preference. You don't have to place yours on a bias and you can always use a different type of fabric. For the slash lines on the waist, I didn't cut through entirely. So for the last three lines on the opposite side of the pattern, I cut through entirely because this is going to have both ruching at the top and then flare at the bottom. So this is what it looked like after I had already placed my pattern. So here's what it looks like after cutting out. For the last three slashes on the side of the ruching, I added less on top and then more at the bottom for the flare. Now for that, you can just open it to however width you prefer. Also, I didn't leave any specific width in between the slashes. I just opened it up because I had to like really walk around the fabric. I didn't have that much. So I just spread open to whatever width I felt was going to be enough. But like I said, if you want more fullness, you can spread as wide as you want. The more you spread, the more fullness you get. Now before I'm pinning your pattern, make sure you note the side for the back and the front because they do end up looking the same when you cut out. So after I'm pinning, the first side I'm going to join is the side of the ruching. So here I'm just pinning in place and then I'll be sewing half an inch down. I'm also going to pin in place the upper side of the ruching. So before I started sewing, I went ahead to overlock the side seams. So here I'm just joining together those parts that I pinned earlier. So on the bottom side seam of the ruching, I went ahead to leave about half an inch opening. So this will be the point where I will be passing out my drawstrings from. So here's what it looks like up close. So here's what the sides look like. This is the area of the ruching. 
So after sewing the seams, I went ahead to give that a good press as well. Next, I'm going to cut a couple of bias. For the width, I made it about one and a half inch wide. Now you want to cut enough to make sure it can go around the area of the drawstring. So here's how I join my bias to just make sure it's uh, a continuous length. So you're basically just going to pin them side by side with the right sides facing and then sew. So this is the area where I'll be using the bias to face. Now here I also went ahead to make my drawstrings and I'm just passing it through that little gap so that you just have an idea. And then to face it, this is how I'll be attaching the bias. So I'm going to be sewing from the right side going into the wrong side of the fabric. So here's what it looks like all done and pressed. Next I'm going to join the shoulder seam and then the side. This is also the side where the zipper is going to be attached. So basically I'm just going to mark out my zipper length and then sew the remainder of the seams. So here all side seams have been joined and the shoulder seam as well, but I did leave open the zip allowance. Next I'm going to attach a bias along the neckline and the armhole as well. But this time I'm going to start from the wrong side ending on the right side of the fabric. So the bias is going to be visible on the right side of the fabric instead of the way I did the drawstring. So at this point my invisible zipper was already installed. I did film an extra tutorial for this, which I'll be posting to my YouTube shorts. You can check it out if you want to see how I installed the zipper. Also, the hem of the dress was already finished at this point. And the final thing left to do was just to attach the strings to the ruching area. So basically, I'm just going to pin my strings and then insert it into the little gap which I left. Now, I just pass it around and that's it. So here the dress is pretty much done. This was so easy to sew. I think the only thing that took time was the pattern making. And the sewing part took only about 20 to 25 minutes. But guys, when I tell you when I put this dress on, I didn't want to take it off because it was so cute. I also loved how the fullness of the flare turned out. I think every girl needs this dress in her wardrobe. So guys, let me know if you're going to be recreating this. Also, this is the final look. This was how it turned out. And yes, I was doing this a lot. Flipping on the side and just feeling myself. Anyways, guys, that's the end of the tutorial. Thank you for watching. I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.